hardcore mode on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I repeat, hardcore mode is now on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Welcome to the ultimate Totem Smash beta and preview. This is the version 1.21.0. Point 20. It has taken me a very long time to set up and prepare today's video, but don't worry, I'm going to break down all of the changes. Let's see if we can get 5,000 likes on today's video. Starting with hardcore mode, it is a toggle. Ironically enough, this wasn't actually mentioned in the official change log. However, toggle hardcore mode in the create new world screen. When you die, you will not respawn. It is game over. You can't turn off hardcore mode after creating this world. After you die, you can see but not interact with this world. Hardcore hearts will be shown instead of your regular hearts. To check this out, just go ahead and create a brand new world. Now, when you do this, you will see we have hardcore. You can't respawn. If you die, good luck. You'll need it. And you have to turn this on. It will automatically make your world a hard difficulty. Now, if you click create, it will pop up with this. Just saying, here's what you need to know about hardcore mode. When you die, you will not respawn. It's game over. You can't turn off hardcore mode after creating this world. After you die, you can see but not interact with this world. Go back or create a hardcore world. Once you enter a world, you will see that your hearts have changed. They are different. This is an indication of the hardcore game mode. Now, it's unclear if this will be introduced into 1.21. However, players can test it in this version. And if you die, this is what you will see. You died, the real echo fell out from a high place, respawn or game menu. Now, if you do click respawn, you don't actually respawn. You then enter spectator mode and you'd be able to see, well, usually on Java, you can see like your blocks on the floor to indicate that you have died and the possibility of how you died. So they do need to change that, but you physically cannot respawn. You have one life and one life only. And this world will now be outlined as survival and hardcore. Moving on to experimental features, we have the introduction of the ominous bottle, an item which can be consumed by players to receive the bad omen effect for one hour and 40 minutes. Comes in five variations, one for each bad omen level. Now, King B Dogs did say that there's actually no difference between these currently. I'm guessing since there is five different versions, they're going to indicate difficulty level. But I'm still waiting to see if that's how it's going to work. The bottle breaks when consumed, can be stacked to 64, can be found uncommonly in any vaults that are unlocked with trial keys, and is dropped by raid captains when defeated outside of a raid. So this is a very, very big change here. As you guys know, if you find yourself a pillager captain and you kill it, usually you would have the bad omen. I currently don't have the bad omen at all because now the pillager captain, the leader, will drop the ominous bottles. Now, this is RNG. I don't think looting makes any difference, but if we just keep killing a couple of these... You'll see here we've dropped, uh, he's dropped different versions. Regular Bad Omen, Bad Omen 5, Bad Omen 2. Now, I just want to kind of get away from this a little bit and show you guys something. If we go to forward slash game mode S and we drink this, doesn't matter which one it is, the bottle completely disappears. You then end up with the Bad Omen effect. Now, this is because players will be in control of the Bad Omen. You can cancel this. Well, you can currently on Java because if you enter a village now, you'll then have the raid omen. It'll have a countdown of 30 seconds and you can drink a milk bucket. Unfortunately, that's not yet been implemented to Minecraft Bedrock Edition because this is meant to change. Currently right now on Bedrock Edition, if you do enter a village, a regular raid will begin, um, but that will actually change. And yes, this is going to completely change raid farms. But that's not the only thing you need to worry about when it comes to raid farms. 
Let's just quickly get a difficulty peaceful because there is another big change happening with how mobs spawn. Before I show you how it all works in a trial chambers, we also have ominous trials, a new ominous event that can be accessed by exploring a trial chamber with the bad omen. This event will have players facing more powerful trial spawners if they dare. However, please note there are some changes that are already in Java Edition snapshots that haven't made it here. But we are working on more tweaks that will be included in the upcoming previews. That kind of explains why we do not have the raid omen just yet. The ominous trial key. Now, this was a very big surprise. We already had the trial key. Say hello to the ominous trial key. Two separate keys in one update. A new variant of the trial key which can only be obtained by defeating an ominous trial spawner. They can be used to unlock ominous vaults. Talking about the ominous vaults, it's a variant of vaults that have a different texture and emit soul flames instead of normal flames. These can be found throughout trial chambers in harder to find places and require an ominous trial key to unlock. These vaults holds a more valuable set of rewards than the standard vaults unlocked by trial keys. But again, known issues. Vaults in trial chambers may generate without loot and cannot be opened by the trial key. So this is used to unlock this, right? Now, if we type in, let's say, uh, spawner, okay? Or we type in vault, for example, there's only one vault. However, there isn't. There's a separate one which can only be found inside of the trial chambers. Because if we have another one of these and try and use this to open it, it doesn't actually work. I imagine in the future, there will be a separate vault in the creative inventory. Ominous trial spawner, a more powerful active phase of the trial spawner with unique challenges and rewards, provides a more challenging experience that players can opt into for better rewards. If a trial spawner detects a player that has the trial omen effect, the spawner will become ominous if, and there's a whole bunch of things you guys need to know. If it is not in cooldown, if it is in cooldown, but was not ominous during its last activation, making it ominous this way will bypass the cooldown. While active, it will glow blue instead of orange, emit soul flames instead of normal flames, more commonly spawn mobs with equipment if they can wear it. Also not mentioned in the official change log, the developers have went ahead and altered the trial chambers. There are, I think, three new types of rooms, this being one of them, which is definitely a lot more challenging. I currently don't have any of the brand new trial omens active. So if I go to forward slash game mode S, you'll see here how the particles are orange. Now, obviously, if you are doing one which is with the ominous effects, it will be a completely different color. So this right here is your regular vault. Meanwhile, this one right here is the ominous vault. Features the best items. If you do try and pick block this, though, you'll notice it just actually goes back to this one right here. This one is so much better than this one. So let's say we did manage to get ourselves an ominous trial key. If we tap on this, uh, this one's managed to give us a totem. It's given us slime balls, arrows, gunpowder, not the greatest of loot. So let's say you did manage to get yourself 64 ominous bottles. Remember, they can stack together and we go ahead and drink this. You'll see here we have bad omen. Now, when you enter a trial chamber, this should actually change upon us seeing one of the spawners so if we enter here this is also a brand new room that has been introduced by the way looks pretty cool once we face the spawner this will change the particles will be different you can see there and we now have the trial omen and you can see we have it for quite some time you'll notice things are a lot harder we managed to find ourselves some silverfish here now this is where events can also start to happen as well there we go. There we go. Something happened there, I think. Yeah, there we go. We managed to get ourselves oozing. That is a new effect. That means when you kill a mob, slimes can actually be summoned. 
And this is the same for every single spawner you go to. Here we go. We found another one right here. So this one's also summoning the exact same. Let's see if any events happen here. I think it's the exact same event as last time. Oh, oh, what was that one? We end up with a couple more effects there. I don't know what that was, but these can be so deadly. Obviously, I have the best um, potion effects on right now. This is a lot of slimes. Holy cow, that's a lot of slimes happening right there. Here we go. Let's see if we can defeat this one. So the harder it is, here we go. It's a prime example. The harder it is, the better the loot will be. In this instance, we managed to get ourselves an ominous trial key. So that's where I could tap this on that and see if the loot is any better. Gunpowder, we have XP, gunpowder, and an enchanted tool, which was a diamond axe, fortune, and uh, bane of offer poops. And every time I just see one of these, they will just be different colors and particles. You have to be kind of in the line of sight for these. Although this one's produced just non-stop uh, silverfish. So as long as you have the trial omen, you'll see things start be start to become a lot more challenging. So in this instance, we're going to have to fight ourselves some uh, breezes. There's some potion effects there that just spawned. Doing, uh, probably helping these guys. Oh, this one. Okay, that, that one managed to hit us with slowness. There you go, potion effect hit him. They might end up with strength or something along those lines. And we've got ender pearls on that one. And I think that's a really cool key. So a lot of exploring, a lot of learning. On the third time, we did actually manage to get ourselves a god apple. Along with that, though, there is also templates. These flow and bolt templates can actually generate more commonly inside of the better ominous vaults. Let's say halfway through, you're done with the whole trial omen and you want things to be a little bit easier. You could then go ahead and just drink a milk bucket and it will get rid of all of the effects. If you have a bunch of the ominous bottles, you could then go ahead and drink it. You get to pick and choose. You are now in control of the bad omen and the omen events. There is a lot of information to take on, but basically the bad omen has been expanded. They are more challenging than usual and are designed to shake up the experience in unique ways. Players just have a lot more control. I kind of like this. There's going to be new icons. Obviously, the original bad omen will actually be updated and players will be in control of this too. And of course, it's no longer given for defeating the raid captain, which I did already show you. You didn't see too much of this in the trial chambers then, but we do have new mob effects and new potions. The following effects have been added. Wind charged. Affected entities will emit a wind burst upon death. Brewed with an awkward potion and a breeze rod. So if you grab one of these, you put it inside of here with the awkward potion, it will produce this. It's classed as a negative effect, but I actually think it's quite positive. I'm going to show you guys how this actually works. The best example of this is with something like a lingering potion. But you'll see here the breeze rod, new potions, and then it goes into 1 minute 30 of this. So if we go 1, 2, 3, and we hit these guys, for example. Now you'll notice we have a new icon, wind charged. When I kill these upon death, they will let off like a breeze attack kind of vibe. If you could time this correctly, this one didn't have it. If you could time this correctly, then you could actually have a mace and jump up and then hit some mobs. Unfortunately, Bedrock Edition didn't get the new mace enchantments. However, I like this. Next, we have Weaving. Affected entities will spread cobweb blocks upon death. This means that we technically have now a cobweb farm. Non-player entities with this effect can walk through cobwebs at normal speed. Brewed with an awkward potion and a cobweb block. So, if you grab this, you put this inside of here, it is then going to brew weaving. It can come in splash potion form and also lingering, like the other one that I've just showed you. And I'm also a really, really big fan of this one. So, trying to get these away from the villages. If we summon a whole bunch of these, and then we hit these guys, and then we kill them, you'll see here, they're actually able to summon cobwebs. And it's kind of crazy to see. You dropped the potato. Doesn't seem to always be 
Oh, oh, it does. Oh, it does happen. Aha. Now, um, non-player entities can actually walk through this. But you can see here, it's now generating. And this is the same for if you were to kill something like a pig that has it as well. Any kind of mob. You did see this one. This is oozing. Affected entities will spawn two slimes upon death. Brood with an awkward potion and a slime block. This one is a real pain, as you did see before. So, obviously, I showed you guys the weaving one. Produces 1 minute 30 of this. They're all classed as negative effects. Comes in all of these variations as well. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time to brew these. So, in the meantime, we'll grab a lingering one. Uh, in fact, we could show it with this. I could show it with these guys. So I wonder if I kill you guys. If I hit you, should summon a slime. There you go. Summons a slime. Aha! There you go. <laughs> and obviously, you also have the oozing ability as well. We do have different colored particles, but on Java, that does actually change. And this could well be the same for if you were to go ahead and kill a villager or something. Does that actually work? Yes, it does. It looks like any mob it works on. Last but not least, we have infested. Affected entities have a 5% chance to spawn one to two silverfish when hurt, not killed. Brewed with an awkward potion and a stone block, which I actually thought was a relatively random recipe. This goes inside of here. Stone in the brewing stand? Just seems very illegal. And these are what we have. So this one, you don't want to be killing mobs. Also, we do need to grab ourselves... A lingering one. I'm going to do this with these guys to hit them. Oh, that was... That one's slightly bugged. Aha. Uh -huh. So when we hit these guys, 5% chance for them to spawn some silverfish. But it doesn't always happen. That's why it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. Come on. There you go. There we go. So technically, you could also have a silverfish. Uh, farm. These effects can be encountered while taking on an ominous trial spawner. Spawners in an area will select a unique effect for the duration of their challenge and drop them as lingering potions onto mobs and players nearby. Some mobs are immune to these effects. For example, slimes are immune to oozing and silverfish are immune to infested. But there are known issues the duration of these mob effects is different to Java Edition and will be fixed soon. That's why we didn't encounter them very often. Moving on to the breeze. The breeze no longer jumps into lava. We have a bug report. Apparently since day one, breezes do not avoid dangerous blocks when jumping. And they did actually share a video. And you'll see here, they actually jumped onto magma related blocks or in some occasions into lava. Breeze now properly deflects most projectiles except fireworks and fishing rod laws. We have a bug report. So here is the bug reports. Here is the affected versions. And here is the video. You can see here the wind charge does damage to a breeze. That won't happen anymore. However, I am curious if they fix the egg one. No, the egg one still seems to be a thing here uh, where... Oh, it doesn't actually produce a chicken anymore. It used to produce like four or five chickens. Wind charged against you. I mean, that's still doing damage. Looks like it's still doing damage. Snowball is deflected. Arrow is deflected, but the wind charged uh, is not. So they didn't actually fix this. The breeze now plays all of its sounds properly, even when off screen. Trial chambers. Trial chambers now generate slightly more rarely and a bit more spaced out from each other. Trial spawner. Trial spawner activates only if it is in line of sight of the player, which is what I showed you, which is why you can kind of get around these. Basically, you're going there because you want to go there. Ominous trial spawners in the same room are more likely to spawn the same selection of projectiles. Becoming ominous will despawn any existing mobs it spawns and resets its challenge. Trial Spawner in ominous state spawns mobs with equipment they can wear. That equipment will have armor trims from the trial chambers, which is why you might see mobs like this covered in chain armor and the really cool new armor trims. Moving on to blocks. The heavy core can now be waterlogged. So you can now put water on this. Along with, the heavy core doesn't pop as an item when lava or water 
flows across it. So if we were to grab this, I'm just going to move this slightly out the way, put this here. We like try and do these around here. It tries to flow across it. It doesn't actually break as an item. And the same will also apply with water as well. The heavy core can be pushed and pulled by pistons without breaking. Now, I tried this. It can definitely be pushed. That is clearly a sticky piston. It doesn't retract it at all. So, again, a few issues that are still present in this version. The heavy core now has a map color of metal. The heavy core now has pickaxe as its preferred tool. And its destroy times have been adjusted. So if we grab this, go to forward slash game mode S. This has efficiency 5. You can see here, they're relatively easy to break. Cobwebs added unique sounds for cobwebs. So these have been adjusted. And of course, this is also the same if you are doing this with something like this. You can see here, break this. The sounds is slightly different. Wind charge. Wind charge no longer collides with nor destroys end crystals. So if we were to go ahead and throw this at this or try and throw it through it and make it explode, that actually doesn't work anymore. A lot of people are disappointed about this. And also wind charge cannot collide with another wind charge. Moving on to features and bug fixes. Updated player profile in the Bedrock preview. In the latest Bedrock preview, we updated player profile page. See your own profile or the profile of other players. In the new profile screen, you can view achievement progress, compare stats, access the dressing room, and manage friends. With more features to come later this year. I would just like to outline that I have all of these worlds for every single beta and preview that we have reviewed. Now, in order to access this, you have to go to the brand new UI. And this is tremendously laggy. So, so laggy. I don't want to delete those worlds because they're just really good memories. Um, and unfortunately, I can't show you guys these new features. Because in order to access this, you have to tap on friends. And if I give this a couple of minutes, it actually freezes and breaks my game. Now, lucky enough for you, the developers did show us a couple of screenshots. So let me show you. I think the developers are doing a great job with the Bedrock Edition UI. Here is the first image. If you go to profile, you have overview. You'll have your friends, you'll have your followers, your achievements. You can see here that there's suggested next achievements, your completed ones, and you have access to the dressing room as well. You have friends, viewer, and followers, viewer, which I did just show you guys. But you also have your stats. You can see here, this person's played for 140 days. Mined 1.1 million blocks, defeated nearly 10,000 mobs, and traveled nearly 30 million blocks. So it's really cool. I like this one. I like this. I wish they did this for individual worlds like Minecraft Java. Who knows? That might be the next step. So this is pretty cool. And then we also have the comparison. So you can compare your stats between your friends. One player has been playing for 14 days, another for 140 days. You can see the comparisons. This is really, really cool. Slight change to accessibility. They fixed issues where pressing enter on a keyboard, keypad, or controller menu button does not send message in chat screen. We have a bug report. So this has been a long time problem and has affected all of these versions. And there is a video here. Basically, this user is showing the issue. They try and type something and then try and hit enter to send the message. And it just does not work at all. Accessibility features. Fixed various keys not being bindable when using external keyboards on mobile devices. Blocks. Cauldrons filled with potions now keep the color of potion when pushed by a piston. So if you grab this, right, and you put this inside of there. I'm going to fill this all the way up. We grab ourselves a redstone torch. And we activate this and we move it. The color is the same. We break it. The color is the same. Containers being cloned over no longer keep their container screens open and cause crashes. The tall grass block is now split into unique instances like short grass and fern. So if you were to type in forward slash give 
at P and you typed in, let's say, grass, we have grass block path, seagrass, and shorts underscore grass. Items dropped from blocks destroyed in an explosion now get merged into bigger item stacks before spawning in the world. All blocks now drop items by default when exploded with TNT. We have a bug report. Now, this is something I actually didn't know, but this is a parity issue. So, on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, if you were to go ahead and break, I don't know, grass, for example, pick up all the blocks, you don't have enough blocks to put them all back together. Meanwhile, on Java Edition, if you blow it up with, let's say, TNT, and you go ahead and pick up all the blocks and place them back down, you can see there that you get given the exact same amount back. I didn't know that this was actually a thing. But now, Bedrock has it. So if I go ahead and light this, we're going to blow this up. Go to forward slash game mode S. Every single block should now be down here. And we end up with bigger stacks. So you can see how much you're getting back now. So you can see this, well, this should well now be enough to fill in the whole entire hole. I'm actually weirdly excited about this because I didn't know it was a feature. So it's cool. It's cool to see. So you can see here there's well more than there previously would have been. 20 more. Is 20 going to be enough for this? It should be perfect. And it is. Added a new game rule to control decay of drops from TNT explosions. Named TNT Explosion Drop Decay. The rule can be set to true. To re-enable the previous behavior where not all blocks would drop when exploded by TNT. So if you didn't like this where you get all blocks, which I thought would be really, really weird... You can do forward slash game rule and it's uh, TNT drops the K and set this to true, right? So if we then go ahead and light this, you shouldn't get all of the blocks back, right? It should only be like a handful of blocks and this shouldn't actually be enough to, to do this. Yeah, you can see here it's not going to be enough. So I like it, but I don't know why people would have this disabled. Probably for like, I don't know, custom map related things. I like this change. An even better change though is to boats. Players can now stand on boats that float on water. We have a bug report. After all of these years and all of these versions, Bedrock Edition players will no longer sink through boats. Check it out. I'm now standing on a boat. This is going to mean more clutch moments for Minecraft Bedrock Edition players. I like this change. I would be in the ocean with a fishing rod. They did good. Updated edit world screen. Export world or export as templates. If clear player data is set, it will be applied in a copy and then exported. It's in preview only. So if you go to your world now and you scroll down to the bottom and you click export world, a new screen will pop up where you are able to change your settings, such as clear player data if you wanted to. So yeah, another map exporting option. Game tip slash gamepad button tool tips. So again, I'm running out of science, guys. So the game tip for sneaking now resolves itself properly when the player sneaks. Draw and release tool tips now appear for the crossbow. Read book tool tip now appears when it's possible to read a book from a lectern, even when you are not holding an item. Place tooltip now appears for doors. Moving on to gameplay fixes. They fixed an issue where the Let It Go trophy did not unlock on PlayStation 4. When using an item on an entity, it is now necessary to release the use button before being able to use it again, which prevents players from inadvertently consuming items themselves when interacting with entities. Sprinting speed is no longer activated with a delay. Ensure the right controller gets assigned to player one when playing on Xbox. Marketplace fixed an issue that could cause the loading screen to get stuck for some time at 41%. We have a bug report. I think all players have experienced this. It's not just in the latest versions. If you have seen this, you're not alone. Huge change with mobs. If you like to mess around with custom mob farms, including raid farms and much more, listen up. This is important. Naturally spawning mobs now spawn at the center of a block. In this beta, we updated natural mob spawns to have mobs spawn at the center of a block instead of at the corner of a block. This fixes many issues 
where mobs could not spawn on slopes, narrow passageways, or in other situations where they were expected to. For technical players, this bug fix will mean that some player-made mob farms no longer fully work. We appreciate the time the community puts into building clever farms, and we try to avoid breaking farms when we can. In this case, we felt that this change was necessary because it improves the way spawning works in many biomes. So that means a lot of the mob farm tutorials you have watched in the future versions, they will no longer work. And you'll have to wait for more tutorials to be released. Now, I'm not a technical player, but this is what Silent Whisper had to say. One of the most technical Bedrock Edition players. He said, this is a great sentiment to have from Mojang. Try not to break stuff, but this 1.21 destroys AFK raid farms. And like a majority of good Bedrock Edition mob farms are dead. Remember, they break Trident killers more we riot it's the only thing saving mob farms so the community isn't necessarily happy about this but mojang are saying that this is a step in the right direction to fix how mobs are spawned and generate in bedrock edition realms accessibility features let's read the change log here are the changes with realms and accessibility features. Feel free to pause the screen if you're interested in those. There was one stability and performance change. Supports prevention of app slash flow restart when dark mode toggled on or off on across Android devices. And user interface. Let's read the change log. Again, a huge amount of user interface changes. These are more quality of life features down to on touch devices, stack splitting UI no longer appears for unstackable items. Forgot to make it lime and shiny, but technical updates. Let's read the change log. There was quite a lot of technical update changes this week. Add-ons, APIs, editor mode, and so much more. This usually happens when we get a brand new beta and preview for release. If you're interested, the link is down below. That was a very big beta and preview. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments section. Just leave a comment and say, hey Echo, Mojang need to give us the brand new Mace Enchantments. If you could drop a like, I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you all in the next video.